Hello everyone, welcome to tonight's 180 service. Uh, we love and miss you guys and so glad that you chose to join us tonight in this service. Please remember to like and subscribe uh, to this channel so you can stay up to date with everything that we're doing here at 180. Uh, this, this summer we've been going through the Game Changers season and tonight we're beginning a new series called Life is a Story. Um, and this series really tells us that God has a story for all of us to live out for His glory. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to play a quick game with you guys so that you can get to know me a little bit better. Everybody, this is Miss Jess, and we're going to play a game called Never Have I Ever with Mr. Adam. So Mr. Adam, put your hands up. I'm going to say some things, some Never Have I Evers, and if you have done one of these things, you put down a finger, and we'll see how many things Mr. Adam has done. Here we go. Never have I ever been to a Disney theme park. Never have I ever been to Universal. Never have I ever owned a pet. Never have I ever hit a sibling. Oof. <laughs> Never have I ever um, proposed to uh, anyone other than Alana. Oh. What? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> well, that was Scott awkward. <laughs> um, never have I ever um, eaten a condiment sandwich. That means you've eaten a sandwich that was nothing but condiments. Mustard and mayonnaise. Wow. The struggle's real. Never have I ever just had a dessert for dinner. Mm, yes, the other I'm night. I was going to say, yeah. college, that college life. Yeah. Uh, never have I ever gotten a tattoo. Multiples. <laughs> never have I ever um, sang in the shower. All the time. How is he, Alana? I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And never have I ever gotten a traffic ticket. Oof. Oh, boy. <laughs> do not. Do not go driving with Mr. Adam. Thank you, Miss Jess, for exposing me like that. Um, I want to encourage you guys to go play that game real quick before we get into tonight's uh, lesson. Find somebody to play Never Have I Ever with. Um, and when you get done, come back and stay tuned for the lesson Miss Jess is going to give us. My name is Alana. I'm a volunteer here with 180. A um, few things about me that you might want to know. Uh, I play guitar, love music, play it all the time. Um, I love french fries. It's my favorite food. It is a food. Uh, just remember that. And a last thing, I don't know. I don't know. I love Vans. <laughs> if you can't tell, I work at Vans, wear Vans all the time. Um, favorite clothing company. Um, but yeah. I am a Haitian American. My mom was born in Haiti. My dad was born in Pittsburgh. Go Steelers. Um, I have two siblings, uh, older sister and older brother. My older brother actually passed away when I was 22, um, but my older sister is still here and we're super, super close. Um, and you guys are probably gonna be able to meet her one day because she used to volunteer here with us at 180 before she moved to Michigan. Um, I'm recently married to some weird dude named Adam. Don't know why it happened, but you know what? God allows for all things for purposes we don't know. Um, no, I'm kidding. Super awesome. Super excited. He also volunteers here with us at 180, so I can't wait for you guys to meet them. Um, super close with my family. I've got like 15 cousins. We've group chat together. We always talk. Um, so I really love uh, family and also the concept that there are people who uh, become part of your family who you may not actually be related to. So I'm really excited to be able to do that with you guys as you guys continue to come to So my story is one that is 
pretty common in church circles is that I grew up in church. I've always been around church, always believed in God, um, and never really doubted that. But I never truly lived my life as if I believed that he was real and if I believed that Jesus was my Lord and Savior. And so it was evident to everybody around me. I had a lot of anger issues, a lot of insecurity issues, um, and just wasn't pleasant to be around. And so it was uh, about 2013 January, I believe, New Year's, and uh, my sister had been trying to convince me to go to youth group for the longest time, and I would always make an excuse like, no, I got basketball practice, I have a tournament this weekend, I can't do it. Um, so then uh, she bribed me, pretty much, and was like, hey, uh, I'll give you this dress that I know you really want if you just go to youth group this um, upcoming week. And I was like, you know what, fine, I'll go. Probably not gonna like it, I'm probably not gonna keep going, but I'll just do it because I want that dress. Um, and I ended up going and they were doing a series that was talking about things that I didn't know church people talked about. And um, it was just so cool to see the fact that things that I was struggling with, other people who were in church were struggling with it too um and it's funny because one of my leaders was miss jess and you guys all know her as your leader as well and so being able to cultivate that relationship with the people that were leading me was so key in who i am now and being able to serve in church serve you guys and serve jesus most of all So growing up, I always struggled with uh, body image issues in terms of uh, just physically, mentally, emotionally. I always felt that I didn't measure up to what um, I was supposed to be in terms of what society um, thinks, in terms of like what my parents thought. Um, I just always felt like I wasn't good enough. So growing up, I was always pushed by my parents to um, just do better and be better, whether it was with um, losing weight or getting better grades or um, applying for certain scholarships in order to just do and exceed and excel better. Um, but for me, it always equated to you're not doing enough and you're not being good enough and you need to do more. Um, and I really see how that is grown and festered into a deep insecurity that I still struggle with today of needing to always want to be skinnier or to, to be doing a job that I actually studied for you know I have a degree and I, I don't really use it um, and just trying to find a, a ways where I feel like I need to put forth more and, and be better and do more in society um, and I wasn't really realizing and taking account that in Christ it's like we don't have to do 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 um, we have uh, a sacrifice that's already been done for us like we already are, are sufficient through Christ and so it's no longer about you need to do more of reading your Bible, you need to do more of serving in, in ministry. All it says that we have to do is rest at the feet of Christ and rest in the Father. And it's so encouraging to know that it's no longer about the things that I do or the things that I don't do, that my identity is found in what Christ has already done for me and what he's already done for you as well. And so I really just want you to know like from my story that insecurity is not something that God wants us to uh, struggle with, but that he tells us that we are secure in him and that we are secure so long as that we're trusting him and abiding in him. And he offers that to us, which means for you, it's present, it's available there as long as we just trust in Jesus. My name is Alana and I am enough. Hello, and we are back. Welcome to 180 Online. We took a little bit of a break last week, but super excited to be back this week with a new series in our Game Changer season. Now, like I just mentioned, we're in the middle of our Game Changer season, and just a little bit of a pop quiz. How many of you remember why we're calling this season Game Changer? We've been saying it all summer. Why do we call it that? And see, 
here's the reason why because you know you guys can't really talk back to me i mean you can chat a little bit but i mean i can't really hear you right now but still oh i'm gonna go ahead and answer that question see when we think of game changer what is a game changer we're thinking of something significant a significant event or a person that just changes the entire narrative of our lives um so this season we're you know we're basically challenging everybody who watches this video uh students, leaders, staff, anybody watching this video, we're basically challenging every one of you to look at your life and see what that thing or what that event, uh, what that person may be in your life that is truly a game changer. All right. Now here on 180 in the lives of all of our 180 leaders, that game changer is Jesus. All right. And you'll hear their stories, the stories of different leaders, maybe me, who knows. Uh, but the stories of different leaders uh, throughout this month's new series, we're kicking off tonight, tonight, um, entitled Life is a Story. So we're kicking off that new series starting tonight with a lesson entitled, What is Your Script? Life is a story, and this week, what is your script? And with that said, we're going to go ahead and pray and get right into the lesson, all right? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for tonight. Thank you for a break. Thank you for a time to rest um, and just recharge, Lord. And I just uh, thank you for technology that's just uniting us and bringing us all together across you know, not just like cities, but counties and states, even Father. Um, I just pray now, Lord, that you would just give us peace, give us focus um, so that we can get into your word and, um, and hear from you and what you have to share with us tonight, Lord. We love you. We thank you. And we pray this all in your son's name. And everybody said, amen. All right. So tonight, we heard just before I came on about Alana's testimony. Wasn't that awesome? Wasn't that powerful? Let's give Miss Alana a hand clap. All right. Um, but we heard a bit of her story and her personal struggle with poor self image. And maybe there are some of you tonight who heard that story and totally relate. Totally, totally relate to this, this feeling of just feeling inadequate or just not good enough. Um, just poor self-image. I know for me personally, um, I've felt that in my, you know, in myself, you know, and ultimately we all have challenges. Not a single person on the planet can say, I've never been through a hard day or I don't, you know, have a, you know, struggle or deal with anything. You know, if they're telling you that they're liars, big fat liars, but we can all agree that we all have challenges. All right. So, you know, for me, I mean, just this year alone, anybody who's known me, um, especially this year has been, you know, a lot to do with my health. Um, just some neurological stuff. I'll spare you the details. We're still, I'm literally in the middle of that story right now. Um, actually like literally just today, like I had an MRI. Um, and for those of you who have never had an MRI, <laughs> That's fun. You learn very quickly. Are you uh, claustrophobic or not? Um, and no matter what, they give you these headphones. It's loud regardless with the headphones and without. But anyway, somebody out there in the universe will understand what I'm talking about with MRIs. But I'm in the middle of that story. You know, and it's there have been some really low lows. Um, I took a vacation recently and um, it was good until that Saturday. And then I was not good. Um, like the things that I go through, I'm like puking my guts up. I'm in pain and still not knowing what it is. I'm still in the process of diagnosing it. And it's it's been a bit of a challenge there. You know, I can sit here now and be happy and be energetic kind of thing. But, you know, there's some people who have been privy to, uh, you know, not so happy Jess. And um, those people are blessings. They are angels in my life and they know who they are and I love you guys. Um, but that's just an example of some of the challenges that I've been through. And I'm sure everybody watching this video, you've got your challenges too. And many times we'd love to go back, looking at life like a story, we would love to go back and change the ending to our story. You know, or maybe when we're in the middle of that story, like I am like right now, 
we'd like to see that script and maybe, you know, see everything, you know, see the end of the story to see, you know, just to make sure that it all like turns out okay in the end. Where are my people who read books and like automatically like jump to the back, read the last chapter, oh, it's good, okay. And then you go back to reading. I was totally that person, all right? Don't judge me, all right? I was totally that person, I'm reading a novel and I'm like, I'm about halfway through, things are getting intense and I'm like, yo, I need to know if like Harry Potter lives. Go to the back of the chapter, the back of the book. Or you know what, uh, uh, yeah, uh, man, I need to know if, you know, if Bella ends up with Edward, you know, I, I don't know, whatever, you know, Twilight fandom you're a part of. But I was totally that person, jumping to the back of the book uh, to know, but, how often do we even like think that we could do that in our real lives? Being able to like just jump to the end to make sure, hey, are we gonna, am I gonna be okay? You know, do we ever really find out what's wrong with me? Kind of thing. And it's, it's easy to like want that. But, you know, thinking on the idea of like stories and scripts and people who have been through like really like challenging things and wishing probably that they could, you know, fast forward to the end and make sure that they were okay. One of the most amazing, this will never turn okay, stories that I know of is actually in the first book of the Bible. That's the book of Genesis. And the story is the story of Joseph, all right? So the story of Joseph, um, if you want to, uh, apart from this video, it's in Genesis, it starts in uh, chapter 37, and really it goes all, all the way through like chapter 50. Um, but it's a really compelling story about this guy named Joseph. Now, uh, I'm going to kind of breeze through it just for the sake of time. But Joseph was basically, um, you know, one of 12 brothers. Holy cow. That's a lot of siblings. I only have one and that was enough. Um, but he was um, the uh, one brother of 12 brothers. And he was actually the favorite brother. Like, you know, the dad, you know, flat out said it everybody knew it and um, if you're a sibling and you know your parent favors a particular sibling um, I just I'm gonna leave it there you're gonna be jealous all right needless to say you're gonna be jealous but um, Joseph was so much of a favorite of his father that his father gave him this coat this really fancy nice uh, coat um, to kind of show how much like he you know loved this son how much he loved Joseph. Um, so then Joseph also had this God-given gift of being able to, you know, interpret dreams. And he had this dream that his family would one day bow down to him. And like a an awesome brother, he shared this with his family. And of course, his other brothers are like, what the heck? What do you mean, you know, that we're going to be bound down to you? You know, you're like the youngest. Why am I going to bow down to you, youngest? Um, so once, you know, he tells his, you know, his brothers that they decide, hey, enough's enough. We're fed up with him. We're going to kill him. A little drastic, but they're like, okay, we're going to kill him. Well, the oldest brother is like, no, 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 Let's, let's not, let's not kill him. Um, but you know what? Let's do this. Let's put him in a hole and then ultimately sell him as a slave. Um, ouch, you know, I mean, at least he wasn't dead, but still that's like, you know, you're going to feel betrayed if your own family, your own brothers sell you off to be a slave. So he gets sold off to be a slave. He ends up in this house with this high ranking official named Potiphar and he ends up thriving. Potiphar trusts him. He has all this kind of basically free reign, you know, it's not really a bad gig, but then Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife is, how shall we say, thirsty, um, and really had a lot of feelings for Joseph. So she tries to get him to do some adult things uh, for those young people watching this video. And, um, and he runs off, but she still accuses him of, you know, doing not good things to her. Um, and so he gets thrown in jail uh, for what was he claimed to have apparently done to Potiphar's wife. But while he was in jail, all right, um, 
he was still like a leader even in the prison. You know, he had a couple of people there who were in jail with him. He interpreted their dreams and things ended up going better for them. And all he told them was like, hey, look, I interpreted your dreams. Do me this favor and like, just don't forget about me. And they're like, yeah, we won't forget about you. And then they get out of jail and they forget about him. Um, so at this point, think about it. He's been betrayed by his brothers, sold as a slave, and now he's in jail and forgotten. At this point, you really want to like, you know, God, you know, what are you doing? Can I read the last chapter to make sure I'm okay? So he's in jail. Um, the Pharaoh at the time ends up having this dream and nobody can interpret it. And then one of the people from the jail uh, that was with Joseph who had their dream interpreted was like, hey, I remember this guy I was in jail with. He can interpret dreams. Well, Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams, which then ends up saving the country from a famine. And that puts Joseph in this really high position in Egypt. And now look at that. All these things that Joseph went through and he ends up in this high position next to the Pharaoh. All right. He's placed in charge of a lot. All right. And then fast forward a little bit. Now, see, the country's in a bit of a famine. People are going to Egypt to like look out, you know, get uh, resources. And so guess who shows up? Joseph's brothers, the ones who sent them into slavery, the ones who wanted to kill him in the first place. All right. His brothers show up. All right. And then it turns into this whole family reunion and you can imagine the brothers you know being made aware like oh my gosh you know look at joseph he's doing great oh my god we sold him into slavery he's gonna kill us all right now the ending of the story really is a happily ever after ending and most especially once joseph's dad dies the brothers are especially afraid of what joseph might do to them um because, of course, you know, Joseph's father loved him very much. He was distraught when everything, you know, happened with Joseph. Like, the father didn't know. The father didn't know he had gotten sold into slavery. The brothers had told the father that um, he had been killed. So the father, you know, uh, was definitely distraught during that. So come to find out that Joseph's alive, the father's happy. But then the father dies. And then the brothers are like, oh, no, you know, we're dead. And now dad's gone and he's going to kill us. But here... Um, in Genesis 50, 20, uh, chapter 50, verse 20, um, instead of, you know, maybe some of us are like, yeah, man, Joseph should kill him. But here, this is what Joseph ends up saying. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20 says this, as far as I am concerned, God turned into good what you meant for evil. I'll read that little part again. God turned into good what you, his brothers, meant for evil. He brought me to the high position I have today so I could save the lives of many people. So think about that. It was all, all these challenges, everything that Joseph went through was all for the purpose so that he could be in the position to save the lives of many people. Because think about it, you know, his brothers could have been whatever about the dreams and whatever about, you know, um, about the favoritism with the father and everything. And, you know, Joseph probably would have lived a decent life with his family. But because of the challenges that Joseph had to endure, being sold into slavery, being ultimately thrown into jail, and, you know, and that's over a long stretch of time, um, by allowing that sort of thing to happen... It ended up putting him in this position that instead of just living some ordinary life that really is like, okay, you know, he ended up saving the lives of not just his family, not just his brothers, but all the people in that country. Look at the purpose that God had for the challenges in Joseph's life. Look at God's control of Joseph's script. Even when things are not looking good, for everybody watching, remember what God's script is for your life. 
All right. Remember that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. I think in my last message, I shared this verse, but I'm going to share it again because it's awesome. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. All right. God has this marvelous plan for your life it's not going to be easy it's not going to be challenge free it's not going to be pain free but ultimately like with joseph it's planned to prosper you not to harm you planned to give you a hope and a future these are all good things that god has planned for you now this again this doesn't mean that you will never go through a single hard thing in your life we've all been through some tough stuff and i mean some really dark tough stuff all right and it's easy to forget that there is a god who is there for us who is in control which is why it's important for us to remember what is true all right the word of god is true all right when the tendency sometimes for people like when you're going through bad things you think of bad things and you believe bad things but it doesn't necessarily be you know isn't necessarily true i share this with the students all the time you know what we're doing here at 180 is giving you hope whether you choose to believe it or not that doesn't make it any less true but we are here to give you hope and we're here to give you truth and in the midst of these challenges and struggles that you might be going through however big or small that you are going through right now all right the key thing to getting through it is remembering what is true all right and what is true it's the word of god and in scripture it says this in philippians 1 6 what is true it says this and i am sure of this that he that's God who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. He, God, who began a good work in you, you watching this video right now, you will bring it to completion. He will bring that good work that he started in you. For Joseph, it started with, you know, way back when he was with his family, his he was, um, you know, sharing about dreams and everything. That good work he started there, he saw all the way through to completion. All that in between, the challenges, was all a part of the plan and that he brought it through to completion. Now, again, I stress the relying on truth and how are you going to do that? Stay in the word. Surround yourself with people who are going to tell you what is true. You know, if you're... If you're having a bad day, you know, maybe you bombed a test, all right? And you're going to sit there and you're going to be like, man, I'm just so dumb. I bombed this test. You're going to want to surround yourself with people who are like, hey, no, you're not, you're not dumb. That's not true. You're not dumb, all right? You just had a bad test. Hey, let me help you study and we'll, you know, do better, all right? You want to surround yourself with people who will remind you what is true, who will remind you who you are and whose you are. Those are the people that you want around you to remind you what is true, to direct you towards what is true, and that is God, and that is his, that is his word that he has left for you. So never forget that in the midst of those challenges, that there is a God who has a purpose for you, that he started a good work in you, and will see it to completion. All right, so regardless of where you are in your story, I'm going to close with this. Regardless of where you are in your story, how bad it might seem for me, my health, it could get bad for you. Whatever situation you might be going through, it may seem really bad right now. But lean on what is true. And the fact that God can take what looks like a bad chapter to us and still turn it into a great story. And that is our message for tonight. I love you guys. Let's go ahead and pray. And then we'll close out the night. All right. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Let's pray. <sighs> Father, I just want to thank you so much for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your son, for Jesus, who died on the cross for us so that we could have hope and spend eternity with you, Father. Father, I pray that 
whoever might be listening, whatever anybody might be going through right now, whatever challenges, what whatever lows, even whatever highs, Lord, Father, that they would never forget that you hold the script to their lives, that you have a greater purpose for their lives. And that regardless of what they are going through, Lord, that you have a plan and a purpose for them to prosper them and not to harm them, to give them a hope and a future, Father. I pray that they would, that they would dwell on that truth and know that you love them and you are there with them every step of the way, that you love them so much that you gave your son Jesus to die for each and every one of them, Father. I pray that they would know this without a doubt, and that they would rely on this truth, Lord. I pray now that um, that this time of discussion with these uh, these small group questions, Father, I pray that it would be glorifying to you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much just for this time, just to get together in this way, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We praise all in your son's name. And everybody said, Amen. Again, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We love you and we'll see you next week. Peace. Thank you, Miss Jess, for that encouraging and powerful message. We really appreciate it. Uh, just a quick update for this month of July. We're continuing our services here on YouTube, so make sure that you follow us on Instagram at 180studentmen, and also subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date with everything happening here. Uh, just wanna point you guys to the discuss discussion questions that come with this video. Uh, make sure you fill those out and engage with those. And when you do that, we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.